Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about a paper called Pixel Recurrent Neural Networks. We will focus on its application to the fields of image generations or completions when, for example, only the upper half of an image is given. However, note that this technique may be used for other means. Image completion is a problem you might have already encountered, if you are familiar with Photoshop and its content over fill tool. However, this tool uses the patch match algorithm, which we will not explain in this video, but we'll leave some links in the description for the more curious viewers. Before going deeper in the paper, please note that in this video we will assume you have some deep running knowledge. Concepts like convolutional neural networks, the vanishing gradient problem, hidden layers or hidden states of a neural network. Also, just as in the paper, we will not go too deep in mathematical or technical concepts. We leave some links in the description that might help you understand some of them better. So, what are pixel RNNs? In image generation, we are working with images, made of pixels. Each pixel is composed of three values, one for each color channel, namely red, green and blue. One of the goals of a pixel RNN is to generate the missing information of an image. To do so, it uses the following joint distribution, that can be read as the product of the probabilities of the eth pixel xi given all the previous pixels x1 to xi-1. Modifying this expression to take into account the RGB components of a pixel, we will write the probability for a pixel as the product of its probabilities for each RGB channel. The authors of the paper made the choice to represent pixels as discrete variables, instead of a continuous distribution. They state that it has the advantage of being arbitrarily multimodal without prior on the shape, or to be experimentally easy to learn and to produce better performance. Now that we know what we will feed our network with, let us introduce how it works. Imagine we have the following image. What our network would do is that it would take the first pixel and set it through the RNN which generates a hidden state. From the hidden state, we add a softmax layer of size 256, and then it predicts the second pixel. We then send pixel 2 back through the RNN, which generates pixel 3, etc. In the end, we will have all pixels generated, and we simply need to reshape them in order to get our image. The paper presents three methods. Pixel RNN with raw long short-term memory, abbreviated as LSTM, Pixel RNN with diagonal by LSTM and Pixel CNN. Pixel CNN works using multiple convolutional layers and not a regular neural network as the one we just talked about. Convolutional layers are a concept we assumed you were familiar with, hence we will not detail this method. Let us go back to our RNN network. In order to implement an LSTM layer, we replace every hidden unit with an LSTM cell and add another connection from one cell to another, called the cell state. And that's it, you got yourself an LSTM RNN. LSTM networks were designed to mitigate the vanishing and exploding gradient problem. Apart from the hidden state vector, each LSTM cell has this cell state vector we just talked about. At each step of our RNN, the next LSTM cell can freely handle the information. This is done using three gates. The input gate, decides if it wants to accept the information from the previous cell, the forget gate, which is used to delete the information, and lastly, the output gate, it chooses to forward the information or not. Here are the equations for an LSTM layer. If some of you are familiar with them, you might have noticed that a fully connected layer has been replaced with a convolutional layer, resulting in some sort of a convolutional LSTM mutant. I invite you to pause this video if you want to have a better look at these equations. For the row LSTM, we process the image row by row, from top to bottom, computing features for a whole row at once. Indeed, for a pixel XI, the layer captures a roughly triangular context above the pixel, meaning that an LSTM is used to predict the pixel using the hidden states of the pixels above it. Keeping in mind that the hidden states of the pixels above are also determined by the pixels above them, it results in a triangular shape. The weight sharing in the convolution ensures translation invariance of the computed features along each row. Diagonal by LSTM, however, has been designed to both parallelize the computation and to capture the entire available context. Each of the two directions of the layer scans the image in a diagonal fashion starting from a corner at the top and reaching the opposite corner at the bottom. 
Each step in the computation computes at once the LSTM state along a diagonal in the image. To generate a pixel, we need these two pixels, above and on the left. However, them being on a different row and different column may be a bit annoying. Indeed, in order to get an input on which we can perform a 1 by 2 convolution, we induce a skew, offsetting each row by one position with respect to the previous row. When the spatial layer is computed, left to right and column by column, the output map is shifted back into the original size. The advantage of using a diagonal by LSTM is that it computes the state for an entire diagonal at once, using all available context and using a global receptive field. Now, let us present the results. In order to get meaningful values, the models have been trained and evaluated using the log likelihood loss function. This function measures the performance of a classification model whose output is a probability value between 0 and 1. Log loss increases as the predicted probability diverges from the actual label. We will be using three different datasets, MNIST, Cypher10 and ImageNet. Here, we will focus on the first two, the last one lacking comparison with other techniques. The scores will be reported in NATS for MNIST and bits per dimension for Cypher10. Explaining what these two represent is not very interesting. Just keep in mind that having the lowest value means it is the best. All the models have been trained on image completion tasks without more preprocessing than scaling and centering. As we can see in the tables, our models perform best for both MNIST and Cypher10. Pixel CNN coming third, raw LSTM second, and diagonal by LSTM at the number one spot. We could have expected these results as it matches with the size of their respective receptive field. The diagonal by LSTM has a global view. The raw LSTM has a partially occluded view and the pixel CNN sees the fewest pixels in the context. Here are some image completions made by a model trained on the ImageNet datasets. The results obtained in this paper show that the pixel RNNs can significantly improve the state of the art in image completions. It models both spatially local and long range correlations to produce sharp and coherent images. I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching.